Good morning, everybody. My name is Pidas, and I'm going to present uh, to you a presentation on detecting innovative companies via the text on my website. This is work that I have done together with Susanna van der Doef. We both work at Statistics Netherlands. Detecting innovation is traditionally done by a survey. It's called the Community Innovation Survey, and that is a biannual survey that is sent to 10,000 companies with 10 or more working persons in the Netherlands. To be clear for this presentation, a company with 10 or more working persons is identified as a large company. Uh, our idea was to see if there is an alternative to obtain this information. And that alternative is using the website of that company to identify if they are innovative or not. We use the text on the main page of a company to determine the innovative character by looking at the words that are displayed on that website. And based on the SIS server data and additional data we collected, we created a model that has uh, uh, the ability to classify the company as innovative or non-innovative. It's a supervised learning approach because we use a classified training and test set to do that. We use a logistic regression model of that, which has an accuracy of 88%. And the model that we end up with has, is composed of around 600 features. 580 of them are words, and those are words that are associated with innovation or non-innovation. We also include the context of words, and that's identified as your word embeddings. We used 20 uh, features, uh, word embedding features for that. And we also include the language of the web page in that. It's either Dutch or English. And if a page is identified as English, then that increases the chance that a company is innovative. And the interesting thing uh, that I want to present here is the findings when we apply that model to all the web pages of uh, Dutch companies. So we scraped all the main pages on all the URLs that could be linked to companies in the Dutch business register. That's a total of 824,972 uh, of them. There are 41,000 large companies and the remainder are small companies. And we only focus on small companies that have at least some working persons associated with them even if it, at least a, a part-time person. So we ignore all the companies for which there are no working persons known. Uh, we couldn't scrape all web pages, but for the large companies, we collected 38,601 web pages, which is 94%, that's very high. For the small companies, this value is much lower. We are only able to scrape 547,000 uh, web pages, which is around 70% of the total of uh, web pages of the small companies. So that clearly indicates that a lot of the companies will be scraped. The main reason for that is that the uh, domain was no longer active. We process the web pages to extract the words and, uh, and we need at least 10 words to, uh, to uh, be able to classify the web page. So pages with 10 or more words after processing are classified. That's an important thing to remember. For the large companies, those results, uh, we ended up with 37,576 companies that have 10 or more words uh, after processing. And our model classified 17,783 as innovative. And that's a very interesting uh, number. Here, I show you the findings if you classify a company as either non-innovative or innovative, but you can also apply the model to classify a company as with a probability of being innovative. And if you plot the probability distribution of the 37,576 companies, this is the probability distribution that you end up with. And this probability distribution has a very nice U shape, which means as a large group of companies that are clearly uh, so, uh, have a value uh, around zero of, of being innovative, and there's a clear group that has a value around one, which means there are clearly two distant groups. And, and this is a, a very nice result of a model. A anything ab with a probability above 0.5 will be classified as innovative. Anything below will be classified as non-innovative. So that's nice. Shows you that the model produces clearly discernible results. However, the final estimate of 70,783 is not the final figure. And you need uh, some corrections. Uh, one of the things you need to correct for is the bias in, uh, introduced by the model. Our model is, has an accuracy of 88%, which is based on the true positives and true negatives. But there are also false positives and false negatives in the model. And if the ratio of those models is not identical, that's not the case, 
our model uh, as a bit uh, higher value for the false negatives. That means you need to correct the model for that. And after correction, and our colleagues at our statistical office has developed an approach for that, we ended with 18,745 for large companies. Uh, we didn't classify uh, the web page of companies that after processing contained less than 10 words. We looked at those results and there was no clear subgroup in there. So we assumed that those web pages that contain less than 10 words have the same ratio of innovation and, in and non-innovation compared to the findings of the company that had 10 or more words. So after correction for that, we ended up with 90,257 uh, innovative companies. And from the data we had available from the SIS survey, from a, a data set of small companies, we also looked at how many companies who are, are innovative that don't have a website. There's a very small group of companies that are innovative but don't have a website, and we estimate that to be 0.1%. So we correct our final estimate for that as well. And then, so in the end, our estimate based on the uh, text-based model is 90,276 plus or minus a confidence interval of 190 for the num large number of companies in the Netherlands. We have a CIS based survey estimate for those large companies as well, and that's 19,916 plus or minus 680. So we are able to reproduce the estimate of the number of large innovative companies in the Netherlands by using our web based approach. That's nice, but that wasn't the main goal of our approach, but at least show you that, our, uh, uh, that the approach we developed uh, shows uh, valid results uh, when applied to large companies. But the interesting thing is in the number of small companies. So the huge set of uh, uh, small company websites were processed and classified. And I've shown you the results here for different number of working persons in different ranges. And the ranges are uh, below one between 1 and 1.9, and we continue that range until 9 to 9.9. Those are the different groups we discern. In the second column, the websites scraped uh, are plotted, and in the third column are the number of innovative companies, according to our model, with the confidence interval. And this shows some very interesting findings, because if we look at the number of innovative companies for the self-employed and uh, part-time self-employed uh, groups, the, the upper two, then it's clear that a huge number of innovative companies are included in there. And if you look at the percentage of innovation, so the percentage of innovative companies compared to the number of websites scraped, you see that it's much higher value compared to the result of the companies with two until nine uh, working persons. And we discussed these results with experts uh, in this area, we discussed these results with colleagues in our office, it's quite clear that these results suggest that our model is overestimating the number of innovative companies for the part-time self-employed and self-employed people. If you look at the results of the uh, small companies with two until nine working persons, it's clear that percentage of innovation is rather constant. It's between 35 and 40 percent. So we decided to ignore the findings uh, for the self-employed and part-time self-employed people because we think we're overestimating it there. But our results uh, suggest that the findings for the company with two until nine working persons uh, seem to be okay. And if you uh, uh, count them up, you end up a percentage of 33,599 innovative companies plus or minus 773. And this is the first estimate we have in the Netherlands for the number of small innovative companies with two or more working persons. And the Ministry of Economic Affairs is very interested in that. Also, because we can't only estimate the total number of small innovative companies, but we can also show you some new products that we can develop. Because if you combine all the data we have for the companies with two or more working persons in the Netherlands, we can easily produce a, a country map of the number of innovative innovative companies at the municipality level. And I'm showing, that's the figure on the left. Uh, in the biggest uh, circle, the largest number of innovative companies are located in Amsterdam, which is not uh, unexpected. And the other uh, cities that have a large number of innovative companies are Rotterdam, De Hoek, Utrecht, and uh, yeah, Eindhoven as well. These are the largest cities in our country. But compared to the number of inhabitants or the number of companies, 
Amsterdam really pops out. It's the hotspot of innovative countries in the Netherlands. For all the other municipalities, it's clear that there's an association between an increased number of innovative countries when there is a university of an applied university in that municipality. And that's very nice because we have that detailed information we're able to use the maps at the municipality level as well. And I'm showing you here the results of the municipality level at the zip code level for Amsterdam, uh, our main capital. And if you look at that map, it's clear there are regions in Amsterdam that have a large number of innovative countries. And those zip codes with large number of innovative countries also contain lots of startup incubators. Those are organizations that support small companies, new companies, startups. And a lot of startups, as we know from our research as well, uh, are in, uh, innovative. And we can produce those maps for, certainly for all the large cities in the Netherlands. And there's a huge interest in, in, in these results in our country. And I end up with some general remarks and uh, uh, future work. We've shown you that this approach works in the Netherlands. We can reproduce the number of large uh, uh, innovative companies in the Netherlands. And there's also a paper out uh, by Kina and Lenz, published in 2019, that demonstrates that a similar approach also works in Germany. So that's nice. Websites can be used to provide the information on the innovative character of companies. And we are currently testing it in Flanders. I can't tell you any results yet, but hopefully when the conference is held, I can tell you a bit more about it. The other finding that we have, we cooperate with Statistics Sweden on this topic as well, because the CIS survey is a standardized international survey, and we try to uh, apply uh, this work also in Sweden. But in that country, this approach doesn't work. You can't use the main page of a company in Sweden to detect if a company is innovative or not. We're, we're stuck with an accuracy of around 70%. There might be a few reasons for that. There might be a cultural difference that in Sweden the main page doesn't provide uh, of company doesn't provide a lot of information for in, uh, innovation but that information might be located elsewhere on the website so perhaps we need to use more pay, uh, web pages there to be able to do that but it's an interesting finding um, in our office in the Netherlands uh, we are, have applied a similar approach to other types of companies uh, we, for instance applied it to detect platform economy websites uh, I've developed a model that's able to do that with an accuracy of 82%. And the interesting application in this is that we use this model to pre-screen companies that might be platform economy websites. So if a company uh, is identified by the model as a platform economy website, they will uh, get a, uh, a survey sent to them, uh, which they have to fill in. So it's used as a pre-screening method here. That's a very interesting application. The other thing we are currently working on is uh, can we develop a similar approach to determine if a company is active in the artificial intelligence area that's under investigation and we also want to look at different types of companies active in, in the area of artificial intelligence and there are ideas to apply a text-based models on web pages to detect companies active in the circular economy or in the digital economy and i would like to thank you for your attention and if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them.